Thank you for attending today's seminar session, which we hope will spark some lively debate about top survival strategies for the region's travel agent community. For more than a decade now, we've been hearing about the slow demise of the bricks and mortar agent. The phenomenal rise of the online travel agencies, fueled by a generation of on-the-go web-savvy consumers, led many to believe that traditional agents would no longer be needed. But it hasn't quite panned out that way yet because personal service is still valued by the traveling public. In fact, consumers expect more personalization than ever before. The key to success today is working out how to balance technology with human interaction, but using both to create a personal experience every step of the way. Our panelists are here to discuss some of the technology and service strategies the travel industry should be adopting. So here they are. To my immediate right, we have Faisal Memon, who's CEO of Illusions Online and IWTX. Faisal is the founder of a highly successful travel technology firm, which caters to the unique needs of DMCs, tour operators, and travel agencies. Using his solutions, the trade is able to track consumer trends and personalize their travel offerings in an online environment. Faisal is also currently building an online travel marketplace that will help the trade compete with the major OTAs. In fact, he thinks it's going to become the Amazon of the travel industry. Let's hope so. Sitting next to Faisal here, we have Marichelle Clement, who's Senior Manager, Leisure Development, Western Europe, Middle East and Africa for Amadeus. Marichelle has worked for Amadeus since 2006 and from the outset has been responsible for developing the technology firm's hotel and leisure business. She's also helped position the company as the leading technology provider for the top global TMCs. And sitting to her right, we have Diego J. Lofuedo, who's Senior Director of Market Management, Eastern Mediterranean, Africa, Middle East, and the Indian Ocean. Do you want to add some more in? <laughs> Expedia Travel. That's a big region. <laughs> Diego joined Expedia in 2001, and he now oversees the online travel giant's strategy, sales, and contracting for this entire region. His industry experience is incredibly wide, having worked for various retailers, franchises, wholesalers, incoming agencies, and e-commerce companies. And last, certainly not least, on the end, we have Karen Story, who's partner in Mojo Inc. Karen says agents need to redefine the customer service experience to meet the requirements of their customers going beyond the limitations of technology. Adopting creative strategies will help them thrive in the marketplace, she says. And Karen speaks from experience, having worked on customer service strategies with a number of local and international firms based in the GCC for the past 20 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to hop over here so I can have a proper chat with um, our fantastic panellists. One, two, working, thank you. Okay, where do we start? Well, I think we really need to split this into two, talking about what the situation is now, what the landscape is in terms of travel agencies, what they're doing, what they're not doing, and then we need to sort out where do we go from here. Do we agree? Yeah, yeah in a nutshell. So, I've got to start with Faisal. <laughs> He's very outspoken on this. As some of you probably know, you'll probably know Faisal. So, so Faisal, where are we with the travel agency landscape now? What, what are agents doing right? What are they doing wrong? Are we still stuck in the dark ages? Is yeah. technology being embraced? Yeah, well, I guess um, when, we, when, you know, when we refer to the actual challenge uh, and specifically the topic of this debate um, in terms of whether the travel agents are going to exist or the OTAs... Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to pretty much rule the world. Uh, I guess uh, I do beg to differ. I mean, uh, the, the travel agents do play a very important role. I've always maintained that um, in, in, in the space uh, that they serve in. Uh, consumers obviously uh, have a lot of choice today on, on the web, you know, on the internet, uh, you know, OTAs, meta search engines. I mean, all kinds of uh, plethora of terms that we keep throwing at consumers. But uh, it's, it's all about, and I've said this, I don't know how many times now in the last so many years, uh, it's, it's all about specialization. It's all about 
uh, you know, knowing your customers' <laughs> needs and actually being able to serve them. Um, and uh, technology, of course, is a very key component, but then, you know, we talked about product, we talked about operations, we talked about customer service, um, and, you know, we, you know, the agents really have to step up. It's not about just trying to be another, you know, another copy of someone else. I mean, you know, we've had so many, you know, so many people come to us at our stands here, um, and, you know, Expedia and Amadeus, they're very good partners of Illusions. You know, we work very closely with them on, on several fronts and providing technology. Uh, and product uh, with our with our relationship with Expedia now as well, um, and when we get told, oh, we just you know we want to have a website, okay, great, uh, and you know we want it to be like Expedia, right? And great, all right, good vision, you know we we love that, but that doesn't make any sense, you know. I mean, you know, it's it's about it's about knowing exactly what your customers need before you deciding about what you want to be. Um, you know, being online is not yes, it's, it's a must. It's it's not it's a no brainer as far as we're concerned, but. It's about knowing basically what you got to do in terms of a strategic decision for your business. And then, of course, working through that with technology, with the human resources, with your suppliers and partners to actually make that happen. So, to, you know, just to summarize, travel agents, definitely, I, do, I don't see they're going to go. I mean, you know, we talked about this, I remember 14 years ago when I was in London and when British Airways went directly online, BA.com, and we said that the demise of the travel agents, you know, when 0% commissions came along. And let, let's face it, we, you know, we're all still here. They're all here. Um, I wouldn't like to use the word surviving, because if they're surviving, then there's something very wrong that we're doing, right? It's just about doing it smarter, doing it better. Uh, and technology, of course, plays a very, very important role in today's landscape to, to make that happen. Yeah? Thanks, Faisal. Merichal, what's your overview of the situation as it stands? Well, actually, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I fully agree with Faisal. Um, 10, 12 years ago, we were uh, predicting that travel agencies, uh, I mean, it was the end of the, of the travel agencies. Um, what we see today, obviously, is a, is a huge consolidation. We see these two large players, Expedia and Priceline, um, under acquisitions. And what we see with, uh, with the landscape is that the travel agencies are there. Um, they will remain there. We see travel, as Faisal said, we need to equip the, the traveler providers with the right technology so they can go online and they can do it in the, in the right way, starting with uh, I mean, looking at the marketing, looking at the uh, traffic conversion techniques, B2B, to then go to B2C. Um, and, but we saw, we saw also our large online players opening shops in the street. And, and what's the explanation is, is very easy because um, you, you attract traffic to your channel, but then you need to convert that traffic into, into real business. So we see travel agencies, traditional travel agencies going online, uh, as I said, step by step and do it in the right way. Uh, but we see online players opening shops in, in the street to make sure that this conversion is, is really uh, with them. Okay, before we just go on to um, Diego, talking about how some of the big you know, companies, bricks and mortar agents are going online, but what about the small ones? Are we, are we seeing you know, still a reluctance to take technology on board and make that investment, both for Merichel and Pfizer, actually? It's not easy to sell it, is it? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, when, depending on the size of the travel agency, I mean, you know, everybody's needs are different, right? I mean, when, when you're a, a younger company, when you're a startup, or when you're even in a growth phase, you know, you, your challenges are very different compared to a much larger uh, enterprise, you know, which has a much uh, bigger presence, right? So again, I mean, adoption of technology, to be honest, uh, uh, Gemma, I mean, we feel that, you know, trying to basically educate the agent, and there's a lot of education here, to be fair, because technology is growing at a pace that's just unbelievable. And, and you know, all of you guys here yes, as travel agents and tour operators are trying to run your business Right? And then at the same time, you're trying to basically survive and at the same time trying to keep pace with the advances of technology development. So what we try and, and obviously educate all the time is, you know, at the end of the day, focus on what you are good at. Right? Your, your, your focus has got to be your customers. Your focus has to be the service. Your focus has to be specializing the needs of the customer. And then let you know, the technology players do what we are here for. Right? Yeah. And it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship. So it doesn't really matter whether it's small or big. 
I think the message is the same, and it's a process that we go through with, with each one of them. I mean, Definitely. I know what, what, what we are doing is to, we try to equip our traveler providers with, with the right technology so they make sure that they capture every potential traveler even before the traveler knows that he's going to travel. And, and, and this is a wide range of uh, products that goes uh, uh, from, from search to booking to go actually to, to, to be with the traveler uh, through the entire journey and, and afterwards as well. I know, I mean, everybody, you know, part up until now has been saying agents were still quite reluctant to go beyond the, the fare booking just using the GDS to book that fare when you've got a whole host of other options and you know um, the ways they can book and things they can book. Is that finally being embraced? You know, selling the hotels, selling the add-ons through the technology, Marichal? Yes, actually um, it is. Um, um, what, what, what actually what we are trying to do for, for I mean, quite a long time now because see, if we think about the, the players that are winning and the, and the players that are actually losing, uh, the, the winners in, in the industry are the ones who are taking into consideration how travelers are behaving. Um, so basically we have this concept of omni-channel. We have 47% of the travelers who start booking their vacation in, in one device and, and actually jump to another device to, to finish the activity. So we need to make sure that uh, we provide with this technology, this omni-channel capabilities to capture every single potential traveler. Great. It's a challenge. Yeah. It's, I mean, it sounds easy, but I mean, it's... it's, it's well, travel behavior and CRM is something I want to come exactly. on to a little bit later. But Definitely. just going to Diego now. Now, when the OTAs first came about, it's very much about you getting online, being there, available to everyone, one-stop shop for travel. But these guys have been talking about specialization, which has obviously become the key of late. Um, so I'd be interested to know how Expedia um, executes that specialization strategy online, rather than being seen as you know, the one-stop shop, just kind of mass market, how you're tapping into niche markets that perhaps the rest of us can learn from. Um, I think the... Um evolution of the online, we need to think about, I joined Expedia in 2001, right? We were not even a profitable company by then. We were a Microsoft Garage initiative. And today we are a 67, 70 billion dollar turnover company, right? So in such journey, we have evolved our own definition of a specialization as well, right? We consider ourselves still very young I'm coming from the offline industry, so I am a recycled travel agent who decided to join the online community in 2001. We do have 22, 25% of our business on the phone, which is done by travel agents that we employ in different call centers, and they sell in travel on the phone. We do have uh, freelance travel agents in, in India who visit the customers' houses take the notes, talk about the trip, go back home, book on the Expedia the same way that you would be booking yourself, and go back home to the in, the, uh, in India to the customer. Is with that the, just in India? Paper. Exactly, yeah. because that's how the market evolves. So yeah. our specialization is the globalization, I would say. Yeah. That, is, that is the specialization of Expedia. We are in 70 countries, um, more than 50 languages, multi-brand strategy, multi-channel strategy, multi-device strategy. So, so we try to make the global, the power of the globalization on an individual base. That is our specialization, right? We use technology to sell travel to people. We're not a travel company, Pfizer. We are not a travel agent. We are somebody who uses technology to create this marketplace where demand and supply meet and we can make profits out of such meeting. And how do you see the one-to-one -one aspect of Expedia growing? You talked about the freelance specialist in India. Is there room for that to um, be rolled out in other markets? And how important is it as the online business grows? I cons when I chat with my wife on WhatsApp, she's in Madrid, now I'm here. That's for me one-to-one. -one. So it is all about how you perceive as a customer. There's no one rule. Is that face-to-face? Yeah, because I put the Skype and I chat with my wife. So is that face to face? Yes. Well, at the end of the day, it's not what we want. We travel industry professional here it says travel professional. <laughs> it's not what we want. It was Mr. and Mrs. Smith with a credit card want. 
if they want me square and blue, if they want me at 2 a.m. in the morning, if they want me, I mean, if I want their money, I have to adapt. Otherwise, okay, as the dinosaurs, um, as the dinosaurs, okay, evolution comes op optional. There is no, there is no evolution as a mandatory. I think it's all about what we call the collapse of the middle. So I give you an example. The, the most, I mean, the, 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 the super easy example is in the airline industry. And I always, if I can say only one advice to the travel agency is look at what happened in the airline industry because that is tomorrow's news for everyone else in the travel industry. They live in very slim profits. So they're always at the edge of trying to make one cent out of anything and everything. So look at what happened with the airline industry. You have LCCs, low-cost carrier here, and luxury carriers here, right? Collapse of the middle. You either a Ryanair or EasyJet that can differentiate yourself by rate, by price, or you can differentiate yourself by experience. People want to say, I flew Emirates. People might be able to pay a premium to fly Emirates. People might be able to sacrifice quality and space and cram and fly Ryanair, okay, because of the pocket. Whoever is in the middle, Iberia, Alitalia, Lufthansa, American Airlines, name it, collapses. The collapse of the middle. The same can be applied for travel agencies. If you don't have a differentiation factor, done. Destinations, all destinations in the Mediterranean look like the same, done. You either differentiate yourself by price or by experience, otherwise you're dead. Brilliant, thank you. Right, well, we've heard a lot about technology. I'd like to know from Karen, where do you think we are in terms of customer service levels, whether that be one-to-one -one through technology, um, in terms of the entire you know, travel trade, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of companies, not just in this sector, but in all sectors, rely too heavily on technology and they hide behind that technology in differentiating their service. So I think that I would go as far as to say that regardless of the technology that you apply, regardless of the location that you have, the biggest differentiator that you have is your service, and your service comes from the people that use the technology and the brand that you have. So I think we cannot underestimate the power of being able to differentiate you can streamline your process, you can streamline your technology, but ultimately the customer experience and how that person feels before, during and after they've interacted with the agency is the difference. It's the grounds breaking. That's the, that's the thing that will differentiate you from your competition and ensure that you actually stay where you need to be. And is this happening at the moment, do you feel? Absolutely not. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> are there any examples of good practice or um, what's generally the rule? What, look, what are the of common... Course, of course, there are going to be pockets of really good service, but I'm talking about looking at the customer journey at a level that is not being done at the moment. Um, and, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys a little bit of a bashing, but, you know, brilliant. Try, try talking... Bring it on, guys. <laughs> Try talking to somebody from Expedia when your flight's been cancelled because, you know, a volcano... Talk to the airline. Don't talk to me. Talk to the airline. <laughs> I, I think we'll give out Diego's what number. What you doing talking to me? I don't have magic. Call the bloody airline. I think, I think the most important thing is that, you know, people... Why do people use travel agents? Why do they use them? They use them because they want a safe pair of hands. They want the human interaction. They want to know that from end to end, they've got somebody, if something goes wrong, and it will, that they're gonna be responsive. They want somebody that's gonna go beyond just looking at customer personas, because as a, as a traveler, I've got about five personalities. It depends who I'm traveling with, where I'm traveling to, how long and where. So technology can go so far. But remember, it's a people-to-people -people business. Sure. And without that, you're not going to be able to compete. Karen, what, what do you think Expedia should do to uh, ramp up this side of things? <laughs> Call the bloody airline. <laughs> <laughs> Just be interested, you know, we all, yeah. everyone is normally in awe of Expedia. It's Amadeus' so fault. It's nice Amadeus' yeah, fault. Yeah. We book an Amadeus in his desk. <laughs> now, I'd like to talk about Expedia. <laughs> 
what, what, what do you think could be done? Because obviously you know, they've got this global online presence, but like you said, the soft skills, you feel like there's more that can be done. Should they have more people on the phones or should they have, should we have Expedia shops or have you okay. got Expedia shops? Could have them. Why not? I mean, why not? why not? Let's open one. Well, I, I think it would be interesting <laughs> to ask you. Who'd like what to run an Expedia shop? You about your service levels. Um, we we find we find two kind of scenarios here. Okay. Uh, we have the very savvy traveler who really, with all my respect, doesn't want to interact with the travel agent because that tra particular travel agent, the farther he had my travel is by metro to the airport, and the customer have went to 100 countries, so very little the travel agent can add. So self, do it yourself kind of travel um, traveler who wants self-service tools. He wants to book, rebook himself. He doesn't want to talk to anybody and anyone, and he's a technology geek, and that is the kind of customer that wants everything do it by, by himself or herself. And then we have the other side, as you, as you mentioned, people that might get on the online and use Expedia or any other website, maybe a couple of times a year, what we see is the um, appearance of social media as now the amplifier of a customer frustration. So, and I give you a, a personal hint. If you want any company to really run when you are pissed off as a customer, go to Facebook and just bombard them. That's what I do. I had a problem at home with my fridge. I went straight forward to Bosch, Germany, and I told them how bad the Spanish office was working. 15 minutes later, somebody calls, excuse me, what can I do for you? That's the best thing. So we feel the heat a lot in Facebook and social media. People put a lot of pressure on us to deliver social media because if they are not happy, they're going to go Facebook and they're going to talk a lot of stuff about us. And bad news is spread very, very rapidly and Expedia is a publicly trading company and that has an impact on the stock so it's very sensitive sometimes people we say in Spanish if, if you don't know how to complain so don't complain okay so you need to know how to complain people sometimes sit and just complain <laughs> air their frustration but nothing happened because you're not complaining the right way so use social media use the tools you have and 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 you will see how that affect and put pressure on, on people like us. And what about the people that respond to the social media though, Karen? Um, surely there's people there that should be monitoring that. And again, Absolutely. that's a one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I mean, you know, as soon as you enter into the online arena, whether it's social media or whatever, it's not about pushing, pushing messages out there. It's about having a conversation. And that means that you've got to train your people to be able to monitor, to measure, and to respond in a way that reflects your brand promise. Because all too often, people spend so much time pushing messages on social media, and there are no conversations happening. So I think it's not about just reacting to bad press that you might get as a result of social media. It's about using social media as a small agency to enable conversations to happen with your customers. And making sure the people at the back end are responding promptly, and they're actually responding and doing a service recovery element that goes beyond the big guys who are not responding at a level that customers are actually now wanting. That's where you can differentiate. So again, it's coming down to personalization. Yeah. yeah. So coming on to that, um, Amadeus brought out some really interesting uh, research a couple of weeks ago, which um, I was chatting to the guys in London, the six tribes, future travelers. Um, and, and what they will be and how the trade should be, you know, identifying them. It's not about what you want to sell, it's about what your traveller wants. And I found that fascinating. Um, I'd like to ask Faisal, actually, uh, about CRM, using technology, using your knowledge as an agent, first of all, to feed that CRM, yeah. and then how you can use that to personalise what you do through technology. I mean, you guys can both talk about that. I'll start with Faisal. He's been quiet for too long. <laughs> I actually want to say something just prior to the comment that was made about social media. I mean, um, I don't know how many travel agents actually have a social presence, all right? I mean, you know, it's good to complain. Should we, if find, you have out? A Should complain. we find out? Yeah. How many agents are in there? Oh, one, someone's escaping. He hasn't got social media. <laughs> don't leave. Don't leave. Excuse me. <laughs> we know you. 
we'll find it. First of all, how many travel agents do we have in the room? <laughs> Don't, uh, right, all right, quite not a few. Bad, not right, bad. keep Good your hands up. up. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Right, keep your hands up if you have a social media strategy. Strategy. <laughs> That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Who would like to tell us about it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, there you go. People are thinking about it. Carry on, that's, Pfizer. That's, yeah, so, I mean, and, and it's not a retort or, I mean, to be fair, it's not about, uh, you know, it's, it's like, like um, Carol was just saying. I mean, when you want to be, the, in, you know, available to the customer, yeah, sure, the customer can call you and the customer can walk into your store. But you've got to remember your customers are more online. They're online at hours that you're not around. They're online at, at time zones that, you know, this doesn't work for you. So sure, you know, social media is important. It's a no-brainer. No but the question really out here is how many of them are really adopting it and using it, right? I can, I can, I can, I mean, I don't want to name names right now, but some of the biggest players in the region have websites, yeah, which is copyrighted 2005. All right. I mean, you have static pages on your website which haven't been updated for like years, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not kidding. You know, there are booking engines lying around that don't work. I mean, and that for us is a disaster. I mean, you know, you talk about customer service. It, okay, there's two types of customers, like we always say. You know, the customer who knows the agency, and sure, he might call and he might just walk into the shop. But seriously, guys, the, the customers are online, right? And, 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 you know, while you need that presence, you need that brick and mortar shop to, to make that available to your clients. It's about your presence online. Um, and, but anyways, that's just besides the point. Coming, coming back to uh, personalization, <laughs> right? I mean, and, and you know, I, I've had this mantra that I've been telling travel agents for a while. And Gemma, I think, was the one who quipped that uh, a few years ago. It was about innovate, automate, or die, right? And I was told off quite a few times when I used that in a big, in I a think big, we both in a big conference, <laughs> yes. Uh, but it is a fact. I mean, we talked about this very thing, you know, innovation. It's, it's about differentiation. It's about coming up with something unique. It's about coming up with something specific to your customer's needs. And that leads to, obviously, the next point about automation and personalization, right? Because it's, it's like Meritzel just said. Before the traveler even knows what they want, we should know what they want. And, and the reason is because you know your customer. You know what they're booking. You know the history. Well, you should know. You, if you don't know, that's a different question, right? But if you now, you know, with the technology hat on, if you're adopting the right technology, you would know that. The technology would have that data, right? And when we talk about big data, we go even one step further. Forget what they are booking with you. We know what they are searching for, right? And that's a very, very important, relevant content, right? So when you have that data, right? I mean. You know, as far as I'm concerned, just as a, as a consumer, yeah? I mean, I've got my set patterns. I've got three beautiful kids. I know I, I travel Easter. I've got to be out in summer. I'm out during Christmas, New Year. You know what? No matter where I'm booking, those channels should know everything about me. And with all fairness, when Emirates.com sends me just a mailer that goes to about a few million people around the planet just trying to sell me the same special offer, it doesn't apply to me. I'm in Maldives every Easter, right? Give me a special offer. Give me, give me $10 off. I don't care. It's $10. It's a deal. We love deals. Humans just love deals, right? And, and, and going back to the personalization point, if you have the right technology that powers your business, sure, you need the use, you know, you need the human component. I'm not for one second taking that away out of it, right? But if you know your customers' patterns, you can be more proactive than being reactive, right? You should be able to know where your customers are you know, what are they looking for? You know, where are they going based on who the traveler is? And, and, this, and the technology can actually make that happen if you use the right technology, right? So again, from an Amadeus point of view, from an Illusions point of view, we have, uh, you know, so much data, so much relevant data. It's all about how a travel agent can consume that data in a very intelligent fashion to service the customer in the best possible way possible, yeah? Maritza. Yeah, I'm um, adding, adding on this and how important it is actually to know your customer because either you know your customer or you lose it. You lose your customer even if before being your customer. Coming back to, to, to your comment around the, the, I invite you all to download the, the study. It's, it's called the Future Traveler Tribes. And together with a consultancy company, with Can Map, with Can Came Up, you mentioned five per personalities. Actually, we came with six personalities. Actually, it's the six uh, profiles or segments that the industry will, will face in the next years. 
and and I'm not going to go into details, but we have uh, those travelers that actually plan their trips based on peer reviews, those travelers who need to actually to travel for any specific reason, either business or religion or medical. We have those travelers uh, seeking um, to get an experience from a completely different culture and the success of that vacation will be based on how really, I mean, they got deep into, into that culture and, and so on. Um, as an example, and we see a lot of difference on, on this topic between the different providers in terms of getting to know the, the customer. I'm going to put an example of, of my own uh, travel, and it's quite simple. I mean, we're talking about sophistication, we're talking about, uh, I don't know, that a hotel already knows that if I'm going to go to Fiji next year, no, I mean, that's, that would be ideal, but let's, let's, let's be honest, what's going on today? I'm working for Amadeus, where the headquarter is in Madrid, but we have a huge de development center in Nice, in France. So obviously, we, we travel very often to Nice. And we have quite a few hotels around the office. I mean, those hotels have been there forever. I've been with Amadeus for the last nine years. I don't know how many trips I, I've made to Nice. I've been staying in all those hotels around uh, our office. There is one specific property in which, I mean, for the first three, four years, any time I was checking in, they were asking me to fill in a paper with my address, my telephone number, my family name, N nothing else. My address, my telephone number, but any time I was coming back, again, they were asking me for my email address. They didn't send me any email, <laughs> but any time they asked for that. Obviously, when I'm able to actually book for a hotel in Nice, I always try to avoid that property. At least, I mean, I don't expect them to, to know if I want to be far away from the elevator. Just don't ask my email address <laughs> every time. That's it. So this is important. Either you know your customer or you lose it. So this is, this is key. Diego, I'd be interested to know what Expedia does to try and get to know its customer and, and personalize to this level, you know, whether it be through um, the travel behaviors, the personalities, because, you know, you've got the, the, the team and the research there to be able to do it and all that data you've got coming in. What do you do with that data? So we have three levels of ma uh, managing the data. Um, number one is the generic data that goes around uh, patterns and uh, behaviors when you get to people uh, navigating the different sites. Okay, so we have three types of customers. Those that know exactly what they want, they don't want to be bothered. They go straight forward to the search wizard. They want to go to London, from London to Paris, a flight. They know exactly what they want. Then we have a second set of customers, which are those that know the vertical. They want to go a beach holiday, but they don't know where. And then we have those that know, have a clue what they want to do, and they're looking for inspiration. That's the three main buckets. How do we get to these people? By different means. CRM, Google search engine, marketing activities, and also our own deal generator machine, which works when uh, people become a member. So if you're a member, you sign up with your email address, etc. you create an account, that will allow us to be more accurate because we track your patterns. So when you come to the website next time, let's say you always look for a four-star hotel downtown, and you made a purchase in New York, similar pattern in Chicago. Next search, chances are the hotel result is going to reflect more or less what has been your previous purchase. So if you look at four-star hotel downtown, you're going to see five-star, four-star, three-star, 443, 442, 441. Because you usually buy four stars. So we want to bring you on the first page more four stars. At the same time, another customer doing the same search, same dates, etc., will see a different sort order. So again, global data, but tailor made, personalized. It's like Every time somebody visits us, ideally we will be producing a unique brochure, a unique electronic display 
that matches as much as possible what the customer bought before. What, what about cross-selling and upselling though? It seems like you've kind of categorized and you know just brought out three groups when obviously traveling public's got as I think Karen was saying, so many different, you know, I might be a, a business traveler one day, tomorrow I'm going with my family, the next day I'm going to a conference. Um, what, what do you do to try and maybe inspire? It seems quite rigid to me. Sorry, it was a have a go at Diego. <laughs> it just seems quite rigid to me, just from, from what you're saying, you know, oh, we'll only give you four stars, that's what you do. How about saying, well, how about the five star? It's only, you know, a little Correct. bit more. Something, if you're in a travel agent, they could say, oh, I know this beautiful boutique hotel. How do you get that across with technology? Because if I'm sitting there trying to persuade someone, they'll go, oh, go on then, book it. But if it just pops up, you think, oh, God, yeah take you know the cross get off do you see what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i mean uh, you need to manage the fine line between being pushy and having the right offer right so we do have two different cross cross sale um techniques one is within the same product let's say you came on a four-star hotel you check the standard room but all of a sudden we say, hey, why not upgrading yourself for $20 more a day and go to a superior room, and this is what you're gonna get. So once we hook you in, then we try to upgrade you, so cross-sell. Once you define your hotel, all other lines of business trigger tours, transfers, ticket to watch Barcelona football game, whatever. Everything that matches around what you're looking for. If you buy a flight, we will give you a window opportunity on a discount to other hotel within 24 hours that you bought your flight. So we always, try, and if you come back for that particular hotel, then we will try to upgrade you again to a different room type or using community uh, approach, which is other folks have been looking at this five-star hotel closer to where you are, community looking at this. What if you take a look at it as well? Okay. So that's what we try to, to, to leverage. Okay. Now, before I come on to Karen, I just want to talk about mobile a second. Um, again, I, th I think it's Amadeus Research has been talking about how people now, travellers, have their mobiles all the time. They can book any time, anywhere, any place. You could be on the plane. I think it came in the, the six tribes, actually. They want to book there and then. Oh, I haven't got a hotel. I'll book it now. How do you get to those people? Again, I know it's coming down to technology but um, using mobile applications, are we starting to see this come through to this level of personalization? Maybe, Merichelle, you'd like to? Yeah, actually, the, the, chance, the chance that you get your content booked through a mobile device is one every two people. So um, almost 50% of, of the mobile users prefer the, the mobile web to search uh, for travel. Um, and as I said, they start with 47% uh, 40, start with one device and they, they finish their activity with another application. I mean, we do it at home. Sometimes um, I know that when I arrive uh, to Madrid on Friday, uh, I will probably have a, a Coke in the armchair. I will have my iPad, the mobile, and probably the computer to catch up with all the emails. So if I'm already planning my holidays, I will be searching for, for the hotel and, and so on. So basically what we need to do, and this is what actually we're doing, is to equip our traveler providers with those platforms, making sure that we provide the most innovative and personalized technology, which is key, well, with uh, extreme search solutions so, so we can inspire them. And if they have a budget, they just get into the mobile, they say, I have 3,000 dirhams to go anywhere, just tell me where can I go. To, with, with this budget, and, and based on my preference, what are you actually offering to me? And this is what, what we're doing. Sorry, Diego, did you want to say something? I'm gonna, don't worry, Karen. Yeah, I, the, the, <laughs> okay, first of all, we need to define mobile. Because when you look at statistics, read the small letter, is it mobile smartphone, or are we talking about tablets? Both, I guess. Yeah, but it's not the same. Mm. Because the experience that you can deliver in this screen is not the same experience that you can deliver in a, in a tablet, right? So. The way we look at it is a customer is multi-channel and multi-device per definition. And the customer expectation is he wake up in the morning and uses the laptop to visit an ExpediaOurHotels.com website. As soon as he gets on the mobile, he wants to continue the same 
experience. So we have to follow the customer. So if he left a last search about his particular product on laptop, when he goes on the application, again, assuming the register user, the experience continues, irrespectively. Otherwise, it becomes disruptive, and the customer doesn't want to follow you anymore. We have seen, and we see a lot of cases where research and pre-book on mobile over the over six thousand dollar purchase, it go back to the uh, to the desktop. Oh. So over six thousand dollar customer go and use the computer to pay. Maybe feel more secure paying in the computer. Don't ask me why, but over six thousand dollars. I think it's because you can see more. I don't know. Yeah. Over six, it's like people used to transact on a laptop, desktop, whatever. So six thousand dollar mobile conversion drops, and desktop picks up again for the same customer. Interesting. Now, Karen, I'd like to know how we can make this a seamless approach. So it's holistic. We can combine the customer service. How do we get those levels up? And then make it seamless with the other devices that people are using. Because yeah. we are all online, let's face it. We're there tapping away social media. Yeah. But we do like to speak to someone. Absolutely. Yeah. I, th I think that the most important thing for small to mid-sized agencies is to give yourselves the license to innovate but learn from the big guys. Um, and what I mean by that is embracing the technology that is out there that will service your business, for sure, but looking at every single touch point, looking at both online and offline and where you can actually differentiate. If you look at the market currently, people that are currently booking online with some of these big organizations, around 30 to 40% of them say that they would actually use a travel agent if they knew where to find it, and they didn't think that we're gonna get ripped off. Now, that's 40% opportunity that you have as a travel agent to pick up business from those online travel agencies. So as a, as a traditional travel business, you need to reinvent yourselves to embrace technology, to embrace social media, and the 365, 24 seven, that people expect you to actually be there for them. But the one thing that you can do is use technology to spend more time in front of the customer, getting to know them better, getting to know your destinations better, so that you become the expert that becomes indispensable in giving people that sense of you are with them through that journey, not just before, not just when the cash transaction happens, but right the way through. So that's where we talk about seamless. That's where we talk about differentiation, innovation, service, and the experience all coming together. And I think if you get that model right, that's where you're gonna be able to survive. Is there anyone in the industry, not necessarily, well, not necessarily travel actually, who's doing this? It can be any industry. I mean, from your experience, is there, has anybody got this right? It can be a global example where we're seeing, you know, this seamless integration between customer service, technology, the 365 um, approach. <laughs> Oh dear. No. <laughs> well, I mean, look, there, there, there are. Of there course, must be. No, of course, there are organizations within their sectors who are focusing and are getting, to a certain extent, the touch points right. But the balance between technology, personalization, and innovation is something that I think every business struggles with. Nobody can say 100% they've got it right, but I think the fact that companies are embracing it and they're leading with innovation, they're leading with technology, but they're keeping it personal. Look at the Apple story, okay? Apple are a huge global brand. They're a huge technology company, but at some level, most Apple users feel that they have a personal relationship with that company. We all do. You become an Apple person, you're an Apple person, and you won't be converted. Because the brand promise, and again, that, that is what it's talking about. Do you actually deliver on your brand promise from end to end? And if you're not, you're going to lose. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. I think this would be a good opportunity to take some questions from the floor, because yeah. we are running out of time. Would any of our audience like to ask our panel some questions? Could we have the mic, please, as a gentleman at the front? Could you introduce who you are and where you're from? So that will help a lot. Thank you. At the front here, please. <laughs> Hi, I'm... Hi, I'm Yamani from uh, Maldives. Uh, a lot of uh, travel agents that I talk to 
are reluctant to go online because of the rate parity issue. So is there anything that could be done by you guys uh, about rate parity from price there? Faisal? <laughs> well, rate parity. <laughs> we can talk about that for hours. Um, are you a DMC? Are you a travel agent? Or? Sorry? Uh, we are a software provider company for travel agents. You're a software provider? Okay, you should talk to me later. <laughs> talk to Faisal. Uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> listen, rate parity at the end of the day, it, it is, it's, it's, a big, it's a big discussion point. I mean, depending on which part of the world you are in, depending on what kind of hotel chains are you talking about, depending on, you know, uh, which, um, I guess, destinations we're referring to, but it's, it's the hotel's way of actually trying to basically, you know, kind of offer that this is the best price available, right? Now, we all know, I mean, within the industry, like any industry, there are different levels of prices available, right? And I've, I've been having conversations uh, last couple of days with uh, channel managers, a lot of channel managers, right? And they, they, they are the ones who empower hotels to basically distribute their, their prices and their inventory to the world, right? But primarily the OTAs of the world. And the one question I asked is, what do you guys do about the trade? And, and both the CEOs didn't have an answer. And, and that was kind of very interesting for us to, you know, like kind of think about because the trade is, when I say trade, I'm talking about the destination management companies, the tour operators, travel agencies who deal directly with the hotels. So it's a very sticky issue. Maldives, I mean, we know Maldives very well. We have a very good customer in Maldives who, you know, is on a platform. Um, but then again, it's, it's like everything else. You've got to look at mix and match, right? I mean, there will be some hotel chains who will insist. And then, yeah, you need to be able to look at connecting into their technologies. Um, and there'll be others, you know, the four stars, three stars, the lower end, who really will not really care about rate parity. They just want that booking to come through. Um, I mean, Diego might have a, a better, maybe, um, I mean, rate parity, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a scam. But anyways. Me no yeah. habla inglés. <laughs> so, I mean, we're a marketplace. At the end of the day, the question goes down to the supplier. Yeah. What is your pricing strategy? Okay, our aim as a marketplace is to offer the most competitive rate and the most you know, research product and the, what people is looking for. If the supplier doesn't get their pricing strategy right, then we can have a conversation with them. We can explain how we see the market, what we believe it should be a pricing strategy behind. But at the end of the day, supply who needs to get their head around and rather than having a hotel providing 120 different rates out there and then complaining so get your pricing right sure but ex does expedia offer a price guarantee if you find something cheaper anywhere online you refund the uh, yeah customer? that's what i'm saying our aim is always to have the most competitive rate because we put our money behind that and it's the best rate guarantee uh, for hotels.com for expedia and and that's what we monitor continuously if sure. we see a supplier that is not Right, uh, price in the right way, we, we just pick up the phone and talk Pinnacle. to the guys and find out what's the story and, and how can we can get access to a best rate. And otherwise, we decide not to put the product on the shelf anymore. It's very expensive for us just to bring a customer to take a look at the product. It's super expensive. So we cannot leave without the promise of, of having a, a great product available. Otherwise, we're doing a lot of marketing for free. And, and this is not an NGO, okay? So we are here for the profit. Sure. Marichelle, did you want to add something? Yeah, it's like uh, if, if, your, if your only objective is to offer rate parity, this, I mean, today is a quite challenging landscape. If you see the travel agencies, the online players became actually tour operators. The, at the same time, they become uh, meta search engines. So actually, everybody wants to be there. And as he mentioned, I mean, ready to sacrifice margin. And it's, it's not only about the rate of the provider, but it's about your negotiation power and the volumes and how much you can actually stretch your margin to, yeah. to get that rate parity. That's why you need to focus uh, beyond rate parity, which is this personalization, innovation, and all the components which will attract the traffic to, to your platform rather than the pure rate parity, which is a challenging landscape nowadays. Yeah. I just want to mention one thing. I mean, it's an example that just came to my mind. We have a, a customer uh, in, a, in, a, in an island resort, and there's a hotel that they work with. And believe it or not, uh, it's a DMC. They have, for that one hotel in, in our solution, in our system, they have 67 contracts. 67 
contracts with one, one hotel. hotel one hotel now you go figure why and the answer is because of course they sell in different markets it's a dmc right so they sell in in in, in europe it's not europe anymore right it's the german speaking countries it's the uk it's the nordic right it's the gulf it's gcc it's india it's cis and and on and on and then they have specific rates for tour operators specific tour operators and it just goes on. And like Diego said, what the hell are these guys thinking, right? Why do you complicate? And not you as in travel agencies, but I guess your suppliers, these hoteliers, you know, they complicate it so much. And then on the other side, when it goes to the OTA world, then it's the bar. <laughs> then it's the best available rate, right? I mean, honestly, somebody's got to really take a step back and, and rethink, you know, what these hoteliers are doing. But unfortunately, you know, when we come into our space as a travel agent, dealing with a customer, right? When you're online, how the hell do you know who your customer is online, right? Am I, I mean, there are, we have rules and illusions which define based on nationality on country of residence. So I'm an Indian in Dubai. What rate does it apply to me when I travel to the Atlantis for the weekend? Is it a GCC rate or is it a subcontinent rate? And honestly, you know what? Nobody knows. Read the fine print, right? And it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. We deal with it on the tech front because we have to. It's because of the challenges the industry poses. But, you know, in the scheme of things, rate parity is, is a very tiny problem in a much bigger, bigger issue that the industry actually faces. And it all starts from the suppliers themselves. I think next year we need to get you guys up with the suppliers so we Bring can have a on. real debate. Bring them on. <laughs> Bring the airlines on. We right? can ask them. Are there, I, any, are there probably I, no hoteliers here who want to put their hands up? Yeah. We do have another question. <laughs> Time for one more. Rate parity. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Samir and I have a question for uh, Meritel. Uh, we just spoke about this for a bit. Uh, we touched upon big data. So as Amadeus, do you witness uh, travel management companies or travel companies asking for more intelligent MI from you rather than just OND segments or where it's traveling? And, and another question added to that would be possibly for Diego. Uh, do you also want this data from uh, GDSs and it, at the same time, are you approaching card companies like the Visas, Masters, American Expresses of the world to kind of look at uh, travel patterns or where the t &E spending is going? Okay, Faisal, do you want to go first? Oh, sorry, Mary Shell, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so answering <laughs> to, to your question, yes, obviously yes. And, and we have, as you could imagine, quite a large amount of data. And we have very sophisticated, or not sophisticated, but very powerful solutions to, to show how traveler providers should put in place the technology to attract that traffic and, and convert it. And Diego, you're part of the question. So if I get the question right, you're saying if we get data from, sorry, from the credit cards, America. you said? American. GDSs. Yeah. I mean, we, we have many, many sources of, of gathering data, right? Uh, our own sources and based on the different countries and the data protection legislation that applies. So in the US, we are able to get certain data and, and manipulate and sell and convert and resell or not. So the data is what we live from. I mean, Expedia database is 3 billion lines of code. So that generates a lot of data that we are now getting into the, the cloud and the iCloud and, 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 and making this global sharing, right? And mostly using the data to anticipate the trends, right? So that is happening. And we have partnerships with Microsoft and with credit cards usage. I mean, that's a, it's, it's that what we live for, data. Brilliant, thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we've got time for. So I'd like you to give a massive round of applause to our panelists. They've been fantastic. Thank you for attending this afternoon and um, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.